Hello guys, welcome to Latman Farms. We are going to share with you the ideal parameters for your fish farm. What is the first thing we need to know? The first thing we like to look out for that fishes are poikilothermic. Because fishes are poikilothermic, we are going to look at what we need to know in order to be at the optimum level in your fish farm. So we have with us over here water from a fish pond and this is our pH tester. There's the lower volume and then the higher volume. So the ideal pH range for every freshwater fish is from 7 to 8. You do not want it to, to be above, you do not want it to be below. Hello guys, welcome to Latman Farms. In today's episode, we are going to share with you the ideal parameters for your fish farm. As we all know, fishes live the rest of their lives in water. And for that matter, the quality of water is very crucial for their survival. We are going to look at what we need to know in order to be at the optimum level in your fish farm. To be able to do this, you need to take records of every single activity that happens in your farm to know what to do. So we are going to look at water. In the water, we are going to look at the source of water. And then also we'll look at the water in your system. So with the source of water, we're asking ourselves, is the water coming from a borehole? Is it coming from pipe bond? Is it coming from a stream? Before you introduce this kind of water into your farm, what you need to know is you need to run tests on your farm. So there are two, there are different ways by which you can run this test. You can have these things over here and then you can just use them to do your own test. Also, you can also take your, the water, take some samples to the lab to be sure that there are no hard metals or anything whatsoever in there. So in this episode, our main focus is water in your pond. Now, the record needed to be taken are date of test, the time of test, the temperature of the water, the pH, the dissolved oxygen or oxygen, the ammonia, the nitrate, and the nitrite. So first of all, you would like to say, what is the first thing we need to know? The first thing we like to look out for is temperature. It is said that fishes are poikilothermic. Because fishes are poikilothermic, this affects their metabolism and their immune system directly. It means that if there are changes in the temperature, definitely you are going to have issues in your fish pond. So one may ask, what is the ideal parameter we are looking at? With freshwater fish, which is catfish or tilapia, we are looking at 24 degrees Celsius to 32 degrees Celsius. The next thing we like to look out for is oxygen. Now oxygen, we are looking at the dissolved oxygen. That is the amount of oxygen in the water. So the less oxygen you have in your system will result in fish kill. And the ideal parameter we are looking for with respect to dissolved oxygen is five milligrams per liter. That is to say that if you have your test tube and you place it into your system and you fetch your water from your pond and you do your test, you are looking at no range below five milligrams per liter in your system. So after testing your oxygen, when you realize that it is below five milligrams per liter, the question will be, how do I increase the oxygen content in my farm? So what you can do is this, it depends on the kind of system or the kind of setup that you have. You either one, allow water to flow from a higher level into your pond. And the second one is where you would like to use air compressors or air pumps. Now, if you would like to use an air compressor, you like to know how much or what is the strength of the air compressor I'm supposed to use. So to be able to do this, what you just have to understand is this. You need an air compressor that can pump water to the total quantity of water in your system. What I mean by that is this. If your pond takes 9,000 liters of water, you would look for an air compressor that can pump 9,000 liters of oxygen in an hour. So at the end of the day, you know that every single hour, the total biomass in your system receives enough oxygen. So if you want to do any of these tests with temperature and with the oxygen or the dissolved oxygen, then what you can do is there are digital testers available like the Blue Lab tester, which you can get like this one and you can, it can serve the purpose for you. 
Now the next thing we like to look out for is the pH. Now we know pH to be the power of hydrogen in the water. So we know that from one to seven, we say that a system may be acidic. And then from seven to eight, we'll say that it is neutral. And then from eight to 14, we'll say that it is alkaline. So we have with us over here, water from a fish pond. And this is our pH tester. There's the lower volume and then the higher volume. Now what we are going to do is we are going to ask ourselves that what is the ideal pH range and we are going to do this test for you to see here to know what we can do in this particular kind of situation. So the ideal pH range for every freshwater fish is from 7 to 8. You do not want it to be above, you do not want it to be below. So if you don't take note of some of these things, there could be bacteria build up in your pond and your fishes will be receptible to diseases. So with us over here, we have the API tester and this is our test tube and we have our water in here. This is water from the fish pond. So you like to take out the test tube and then you like to pour in some water from your fish pond into the system. So you want to make sure it is at the meniscus. There's a meniscus over here. All right. So this is our water from our fish pond. So some of these substances that we use to do the test may be harmful to me. And so that is why I have the gloves. I have the goggles. And then I have some nose mask over here to protect myself. So the low pH tester measures a minimum range of six and a maximum range of 7.6. And then the high range pH, pH tester checks a range from the minimum of 7.4 to a maximum of 8.8. .8. So in this R system, you are going to open this. So when you read here, it says add three droplets. And so we are going to add three droplets to this. Now we have three droplets in there. And then we will close it and shake vigorously for the next five seconds. Okay, good. So to know whether it is in a high range or low range, what we have to do is we just need to attach it with this and then let's all see where it falls. So over here, um, so it's around 6.8 or 7, it's around 7, which means that it's in the ideal range that we are looking for. Okay, so after realizing that this is around 7.0, there's no need for us to use the high pH range anymore because we've attained the absolute figure we are looking for. Now the next thing we'd like to look out for is ammonia. Now, as a result of excretion from fish, Ammonia can be built up in your system. The more ammonia you have in your system can make your system or your fish pond very, very acidic. So to be able to check your ammonia again, we would like to take another test tube. We open it. And then we have some water from our fish pond. Good, add the meniscus again. And then now what we'll do is, we'll take our ammonia tester. First, we are starting with the smaller range. And then over here it says, add eight drops. So we are going to add eight drops.
So we have our eight drops in here. We close it and then you shake vigorously for the next five seconds. So after measuring this, we can realize that it is, our, it is between 0 0.25 ppm and 0 0.50 ppm. So in this our system, it means that we could either flush out some of the water and top up with some new water to be able to maintain the optimum levels. Because you do not want your ammonia to be above 0.05 milligrams per liter or ppm. Now the next thing we would like to look out for is the nitrate. Is the nitrate. And also with the nitrate, we would like to get Also with the nitrate, we would like to pour in some fish water. Okay. Then we would have about 10 droplets in here. So the 10 droplets Good So we can see that over here, it's around 0, 0.0 ppm. And normally you do not want your nitrate to be above between 50 to 70 ppm. Any levels above 70 means that your fishes will be prone to bacteria. And for that matter, you have diseases in your system. Now the next thing we'd like to look out for, which is the last thing for today's session, is going to be the nitrite. So what you do is you introduce your water from your pond into your first tube again. All right, then you get your nitrite solution. So over here it says add five droplets. So count with me. One, two, three, four, five. And then we shake for the next five seconds. And then over here as well, we have around zero ppm. Now, when it comes to your nitrite, you don't want it to be above 0 0.5 ppm. So this is to tell you that the fish farm from which we did the setup from is at optimum levels. For that matter, our fishes would have a stronger immune system to be able to fight against any kind of diseases. Most of the time we tell people, we do not want to wait for us to have disease in our system before we try to treat them. If you are maintaining any of these ranges in your ponds, then it means that you are going to have good fish and you are not going to have fish death. Also, if any of these parameters, you are below any of these parameters, then it means that your fishes will be receptible to diseases and for that matter, you may have fish death. So that's it on today's episode with Latma Farms, we would like to tell you as well, please like, share and subscribe because this quality information is going to help someone else somewhere to be able to make good use of their farm. So see you in our next episode. Bye.